All right, so thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Kylie and I'm with the Feline Conservation Foundation. I'm on the Conservation Committee and we are here to celebrate World Joffrey Cat Day. Uh, it's celebrated every year on January 28th and we created this day to really bring awareness to our favorite little wild cat, the Joffrey's cat. Um, so we are very excited to have Flavia joining us today. Um, a little bit about what the FCF is doing with the Joffrey's cats. We've actually recently started a new conservation initiative um, that we're calling the Joffrey Cat Project. And our hope is to get facilities here in the United States that have Joffrey's cats to join us in conservation initiatives. And we've partnered with the Joffrey Cat Working Group. So we're very excited to be able to all team up together in um, support of our favorite little cats. And uh, it's kind of fun. We've made this whole sign that the facilities can get to you know, educate the public and their guests um, when they're viewing their cats there. And we even made these little conservation kits um, that the uh, zoos can sell in gift shops. And it's so fun. We've got um, some FCF gear, a little patch, a little Joffrey's cat ornament in it, sticker, and a little uh, fun little note card. And we have, uh, with Flavia's help, been able to put some uh, GPS coordinates to actually track wild Joffrey's cats that people will be able to do if they get a conservation kit at your zoo. Um, so if anyone is watching that as at a zoo that does um, work with Joffrey's cats, feel free to reach out to us if you want to join and become um, a part of our Joffrey cat project to help support conservation work with them in the wild. And I am actually um, a uh, deputy director of Amazing Animals Inc. We're located in Central Florida and I work with four Joffrey's cats here. So we have Rio and Aries and Kiwi and Azula. So they have just become my favorite species to work with. I fell in love with the cat and that's why I wanted to create a day to help um, bring awareness to them. And I'm actually wearing my Joffrey cat t-shirt right now. So we also have a t-shirt fundraiser happening um, through the end of the month. And all of the money that we raised with the t-shirt is going to go back into supporting the conservation efforts as well. So I'm very excited. We've raised over $500 so far. So if you wanna buy a Joffrey cat t-shirt, we've got links posted all over social media. Um, so we're very excited to have Flavia join us today. And we're gonna jump right in. Flavia is the lead of the Joffrey cat working group. Um, and they are doing some amazing, amazing Joffrey cat conservation down in South America. Um, so tell us a little bit about your background and working with the wildcats in Brazil. Hi, Kylie. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. And uh, well, about your question, I was born in Southern Most Brazil uh, in the Pampas where Joffrey's cat lives. So um, I was crazy about the small wild cat since I was a very young girl. So I studied biology to work with them. I graduated in 2007 in biology. I finished my master in 2010 and my PhD in 2017. And today I'm a postdoc researcher uh, at the Federal University of uh, Rio Grande do Sul. Uh, where uh, I advise master and PhD students and where we do some uh, work um, with um, research and also conservation. But when I was, uh, well, I've been working with small wild cats since 2005, uh, working with ecology, including dietary movements, habitat use, daily activity patterns, a lot of these uh, different uh, methods to understand a little bit about the ecology of um, small wild cats here from the neotropical. Uh, and especially in the Pampa and Atlantic forest biomes. Pampa, it's a biome that it's almost, um, it's an open grasslands, more, more similar to a savanna where Joffrey's cat lives. And Atlantic forest is more like probably pe what people think about Brazil, like more tropical rainforest, these kind of things. Uh, well, and um, but when I was doing my PhD and I was doing in the grasslands, in the this uh, savanna, subtropical savanna, uh, where I'm, I am from, 
uh, and where Joffrey's cats are from too, I noticed that people from my local community, they didn't know about this species. They, they, and even, and there are some that have some conflicts with small wild cats, and, but they didn't know anything about, about them. So how they can be, how there uh, could be an interaction or a sensi uh, could be sen sensibilized, sensibilized, sorry, the English, <laughs> uh, if um, they don't know the species, yeah. So I started to work with environmental education about the small uh, wildcats from the southernmost Brazil as an additional project to my PhD. And because I turned in that direction, Today, I'm a member of Procarnivorous Institute, which is an NGO that works with carnivorous conservation here in Brazil. I was invited to work in Brazilian action plan for small wild cats to be a taxon coordinator uh, of status definition of the phthalates in Brazil. I'm a member of specialist ca uh, cat group in IUCN. And last but not least, uh, I'm coordinator of Joffrey's Cat Working Group. <laughs> very, uh, and very happy with that. <laughs> yes, we are very lucky to have you with the working group. And wow, I mean, you just have a whole long list of some awesome stuff that you do down there uh, with the small wild cats. So, so awesome. Um, so why are Joffrey cats important to the ecosystems in South America? And tell us a little bit about their conservation status. Perfect. So all phthalates, all cats are ob obli obligate uh, carnivores. I don't know if I pronounce correctly, uh, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so they need, they need to eat meat, only meat uh, for their dieters. Uh, so Joffrey's cats, as other cats, are predators because uh, of that role in the ecosystem. They control population of their prey and their main prey are rodents. Some rodents species such as the exotic ones, for example, could consider it plagues for croplands or they could be a vector for spreading disease. So Joffrey's cats are controlling, since Joffrey's cats are controlling the population of these species, uh, they also exert in an ecosystem service to humans. So, uh, but unfortunately, even, even they do an uh, as ecosystem service, um, controlling this, the population of uh, some species of rodents, um, Due to the habitat loss, there are much more contact with humans, which generate different conflicts, such as road kills, po poaching, uh, some cats killing by dogs, uh, domestic dogs, fire, poisoning, and disease. And in my region, uh, this species is the most is the, the small cat species most hunted. And this is illegal, illegal here, because in Brazil it's forbidden to hunt any native uh, animal. So even categori categorized globally as least concern, this species is threatened in different countries. For example, here in Brazil, this species is considered a, a threatened species, it's vulnerable. Uh, Joffrey's cat was the world's second most frequently traded fur in the past decades. And now they really need our help. So with all of the threats uh, have around, so we, we, we try to, to help them. <laughs> Yes, it's, it's so important. Um, and actually, that kind of leads to my next question for you is how did the Joffrey Cat work, Working Group get started? So, uh, Jean Sanderson from Small Wild Cat Conservation founded different working groups around the world about small wild cats. So, the, his, uh, his objective is to make a real action uh, of conservation of this species. So he contacted Mauro Luccherini, and Mauro 
uh, uh, was my co-advisor during my PhD. So he was he know he knew about my work, what I was doing, and how I was working with uh, local community engagement. And so Mauro indicated me to start and coordinate this working group with Geoffrey Scott. And I'm glad, and of course I gladly accept. So I start to contact people from different countries that work with this species and with its conservation. Among them was Kylie Reynolds. <laughs> and thank you, Kylie, for accept. Uh, and, and after we have this, this a good number of conservationists and people that are really engaged, we officially founded the Geoffrey's Cat Working Group in December 2020. Yes, I'm so happy to be a partner with the group and just, um, you know, obviously being up in Florida, my big role was starting Geoffrey Cat Day, which we're celebrating January 28th. Um, and it's just been so much fun that we, it was kind of perfect timing how it all you know, started December 2020, I had just decided to do Joffrey Cat Day for January of last year. And I mean, we made it a worldwide celebration, which is just so awesome to be able to share all about all this work everybody's doing um, for these little wild cats. And so uh, tell us a little bit more about um, what exactly the working group is doing. Okay. So Joffrey's Cat Working Group is a network of conservation practitioners, as Kyle. Uh, and we, there are also researchers and enthusiasts that aims to help the survival of Geoffrey's cat in wild population and in natural habitats across the entire distribution range, but also doing um, educational environment in all around the world. So we uh, already are formed by 29 projects and we are very proud of that with 18 with mitigation actions. And we have more than uh, 40 members spread ac across the six countries and other countries too, like in US, Kylie, and we have a member in Italy, we have a, a German member too. So we are spreading really <laughs> about job risk um, so uh, we, we globally, we intend to raise public recognition and uh, at the same time carrying out environmental education campaigns in local communities. So besides many other uh, mitigation projects, of course, there are on ongoing. So this is this. A, yeah, a general exactly. idea. <laughs> tell us, tell us about um, what some of the projects members in the working group have been working about. Let's hear about some of those projects. Okay, perfect. So the members have their own uh, local projects. So there are projects in, for example, from Bolivia until the 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 southern tip of Chile and Argentina. In the entire distribution, we have local projects and uh, each project uh, we, we support, we help them, uh, we help fin uh, with, um, uh, with grants, but also we help them um, to interact with other projects and try, and try to produce some material to share among all the projects. So um, there are these kind of local projects and there are global projects where members work together. So I will give you some example of both types of projects. Uh, one, um, I will give you some example, giving the names of our members that I, I think it's, it's nice. So Lucila Castro uh, is working in local communities in central north of Argentina focusing uh, sen sensitization, how I'm terrible with this word, but <laughs> sensitization, it's correct? Yep, sensitization. No? Okay, uh -huh. thank you, sorry. Yeah. So she's doing um, workshops in rural schools, uh, working in local museums and in social media too, in that area. So she's working trying to, to engage that uh, local community uh, there in that specific area of Argentina. 
Um, another example is Felipe Peters, Marina Favarini and I, we are working here in southernmost Brazil to avoid road kills. So here uh, we already have some signs ready that we are very excited because there are beautiful pictures from Felipe Peters and um, these signs are already ready, but we need, um, now we are in the process to install these this signs in the road. So uh, these kind of projects are projects that work locally, focus in local, in, in the area that we are work uh, and um, with the culture of that area, with people from that area, talking with people from from the same area, so they you feel like much more invite in that environment. But we also have other projects that uh, work. Um, we call it like pro global projects. Um, for example, that uh, um, there are projects that members from Joffrey's Cat Working Group work together, but virtually. For example, Paula Horn from from Brazil. Melanie Kaiser from uh, Germany, Byro Guzman from Chile, and Kylie Reynolds from US, and I'm from Brazil. We are doing a brochure about uh, how um, to share among local communities about chicken coops and how to avoid conflicts. So we are doing this virtually, uh, and this is very exciting because we are taking, we are doing this in different kind of places in the world, but uh, focus in one objective. Uh, so there are another one, another project that we are doing virtually is uh, the global educational, uh, with global educational material. So Paul and I, we create a global material for environment education about neotropical small wild cats. And other members such Paola Ascaruz, Chimena Velas, Lieno from Bolivia, and Kylie from US help us with the translations to Spanish and to English because I'm from Brazil, I speak Portuguese. I know a little bit of English, as you know, but I have my issues. <laughs> and so Kylie help, help us with these translations. And so um, in this case, uh, Chimi and Paola are helping us with the Spanish version. So this is a great um, uh, connection, a great network that is working very well. I'm very glad to, to, to have this, this kind of thing. Yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun being just able to all work together. And I mean, we have a WhatsApp group chat and we're all speaking different languages and all throughout different countries. And it's just it's so awesome to all work together. I'm personally really excited for the chicken coops because um, I think that's going to be a really cool thing that a lot of our members have already helped farmers um, build better chicken coops so that they don't re retaliate against the Joffrey's cats for coming into their coops and stealing their chickens. So it's just so simple. And that seems to be a common thing across every country is issues with farmers and the cats stealing their chickens. So teaching them how to build a better chicken coop, hopefully to uh, protect the Joffrey's cats. Um, and actually Felipe is also doing, I know one project that FCF, he got a grant for. Um, we do a conservation grant. So I know Felipe got the uh, grant this year that he's gonna be doing some conflicts with feral cats too right? Tracking feral cats and hopefully fixing and vaccinating feral cats in the region. So. Yes, I think they will start like uh, in probably next week or something like that. <laughs> it's very soon. They are very um, glad with this, uh, with this project. And so they, they are already doing, but uh, the actual moment I think it's now <laughs> yes. yeah I know he's, he's planning to do that all year so it's great that FCF was able to help a little bit with the grant uh, but actually that kind of leads me to my next question is what kind of funding do you think is needed to make a greater impact for Joffrey cat conservation and how can others help support this oh, perfect this is a very good uh, question well in fact we need all kind of fundings because we work in different scales. So we work locally and globally, as I, I said before. So any help is important. For example, with 10 
US dollars. Uh, you can provide food for a cat in a rehabilitation center for a week uh, in a lot of countries here in South America. So, and with 100 US dollars, you can build one chicken coop. So this is just give you an idea that kind of different amount, we can do different things. So of course, if we have like three, four, five thousand dollars, we can create a great project with different kind of um, mitigation actions. And uh, so it will depend of how much we have, but in any amount, we will try to do our best. <laughs> so you can support us donating uh, in our entering enter in our website, and there is a button there. So just help us any amount, we will be very glad. And in addition, you also can help sharing social media posts, talking about the species, asking someone, what is, who is this cat? What is this cat? And um, so there are nowadays, there are artists that paint these species and beautifully. So photographs that, uh, photographers that show their pictures, uh, wonderful pictures also. And in summary, spreading the word about the species and uh, about our work. So you can help also with foundings, but also um, spreading and sharing uh, about this species, talking about it. <laughs> yes, yes, I love I love social media. It does it does a lot, and uh, hopefully we'll raise some money for Joffrey Cat Day. I know I already have over five hundred dollars raised just by buying a t shirt. So if you haven't gotten a Joffrey Cat Day t shirt, you know, such an easy way to help support all of the work that you guys are doing in South America. And uh, yeah, the Joffrey Cat Working Group now has a donate button and the Feline Conservation Foundation, you can donate directly to the Joffrey Cat Project. And all of that is gonna be supporting all of these projects. Um, so with that being said, what do you think are some of the biggest conservation needs? Um, whether it be the education, chicken coops, car strikes, what do you think are some of the biggest conservation needs that we need to focus on? Uh, I think the biggest need for conservation effort is to really get many actors involved and connect in a large network to do this uh, machine work correctly. So, um, okay, local community engagement, helping to build uh, chicken cops, uh, work to prevent car strikes is hard, but we can do, and we are doing this, um, locally, step by step, uh, baby steps, but we are helping. But I think the much harder is to connect uh, or with uh, big companies to stop or at least to decrease, to destroy habitat, natural habitats, uh, to plant, for example, soybeans, croplands, or, or this kind of thing. So here there is all this transformation of natural habitats in croplands. And for me, this is uh, our big issue, how we can, this is our great challenge. So when it is connected to with economy, it's difficult to get effective support from governmental actors. So we are trying to find a way inside this um, cocoon or this, this thing that we can enter and we can cr crash a little bit to try to, to, to um, focus in conservation efforts in this moment, in this area. But uh, this I think is, is, is the biggest, uh, is, the, is the hard um, um, uh, effort uh, for conservation uh, that we can try, you know, the other things we can do, but this, can, this kind of things, it's, it's bigger. <laughs> Yeah, the, the big we'll get that there. Lost, is that like your like the big companies clearing out all the oh it's tough. It's really tough. Well, hopefully, hopefully all of us working together, we can 
get there and make a little bit of a difference. And actually that kind of goes right into our next question is how do you think World Joffrey Cat Day can make an impact to support these conservation efforts? Wonderful. So this day, that was Kylie's idea <laughs> and was Kylie's action. And we are very glad uh, to, to have this day. So this is a perfect moment to spread in a word about Joffrey's cat and about its habitats. And these kind of things, when everybody is talking about something, when these things go to uh, people that are uh, important uh, um, for, from uh, other uh, people, like, for example, actors or this kind of things, so, so the big companies start to think, mm, maybe I could be a little bit green or something. So this kind of things help us. So uh, the, in this uh, day, it's a perfect moment to spreading the word about, about this cat, about habitats and about its threats and how to help them. So this is a moment to get involved to, in different ways. So artistic, cultural, scientific, and wherever uh, comes in mind, we, we can try to, to do something great. Uh, so this year on the World Joffrey's Cat Day, we will launch uh, the global education material about the neotropical small wildcat. So here, I just have some example of just a small example of uh, some of uh, this is for uh, children's to color and not so not only children everybody can do that uh, and uh, so we have a lot of different we have memory games board games and a lot of uh, material that will be for free in our website just print and wherever you are it's it's to learn about this species and to get involved. And uh, in Brazil, we will send uh, this kit to different, uh, different families um, so the children can play and learn about this species in their own uh, houses because uh, nowadays here still, uh, we're still with the pandemic and our idea was to do a great thing in, um, in a, in a park or something like that. But unfortunately the pandemic didn't allow us to do that. So we will, we will uh, send this to a lot of children and they will send pictures and mark us um, in Instagram and Facebook to show us how they are having fun and learning about. So we have, no, and we will launch um, this, um, a brochure about um, to avoid conflicts and uh, chicken coop. So we are doing a lot of things, just spread, start the spreading. And then I hope this uh, will be shared and to, to all of different people and in different countries. So excited. And uh, I think last year we probably reached hundreds of thousands of people just on social media. There was so many people sharing about World Joffrey Cat Day. Um, so how do you think people watching now, how can they help us celebrate? Well, you can join us um, in our social media during the 28th. Uh, we will post a lot of news. We will have a live with um, children here, uh, here in Brazil, launching our global education material. It will be just a few, ch few children, but uh, at least they will uh, show how it will be fun to work with this material and to learn. And um, I wish you all uh, could enter in, in the website, check our, our all the things we have, all the information and all this material. And uh, so join us in social media. Um, you have, uh, we will have a lot of uh, cool and different things in that day and a lot of things to celebrate. So check, check us in Instagram and in Facebook and help us to, to enjoy this day and celebrate it. Yes, I'm so excited. And yeah, you guys can check out the Joffrey Cat Working Group on Instagram and Facebook and they have a website. Um, I run the Joffrey Cat 
uh, Facebook and Instagram page. We've got the Feline Conservation Foundation is going to be sharing all sorts of stuff with us. And I've already seen a lot of zoos here. Um, I know Tigers for Tomorrow is doing something fun. They're telling anyone who gets a Joffrey Cat shirt, it's in free Yay. all week this week. So a lot of places are really trying to help and support, get the word out there. And I always tell all of my groups that come visit us and learn about our Joffrey Cats that you don't know to protect what you don't know and what you don't love and care about. So even if you just tell somebody about a cat, about a Joffrey cat, and they learn about this new species they've probably never heard about, that could end up making a difference. And who knows, maybe a famous actor will come join us and we can help protect all of the ecosystems and make a huge difference. Maybe someone <laughs> will donate a million dollars to us and we can do all of these projects uh, all over South America. So um, thank you so much, Flavia, for joining us today and doing this interview so we can tell everybody about the Joffrey Cat Working Group and to celebrate World Joffrey Cat Day on January 28th every year. We're doing it every year. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kyle, for the opportunity to talk about our group and to, 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 to tell people about uh, the Joffrey's Cat Working Group. <laughs> yes, well, thank you for all the work you do uh, down in South America. We definitely appreciate it, Flavia. All right. Thank, <laughs> thank you all for joining us. Bye, guys. Take care, Bye. everybody.